Hey everybody, Steve. So following up on the April 5 uh, video trip to the farm, I told you I'd give you a report when things started to melt and they have. Uh, we've gone through kind of up and down, cold and warm, both here at the city house and up there. The difference is they're getting oh, fairly significant snow. So I think they got it in there eight inches or so across two small storms. But the water's running, it's melting, it's running. Um, had some video taken of, uh, of the ditch that I showed you guys that was all snow packed, it's now running. And uh, things aren't perfect there with that amount of water, but there's water across this property every year. So we just work on learning how to manage it. So take a look at this video. I've got some commentary along the way, and then I've got some, uh, borrowed some video from another YouTube channel with permission, uh, so that you can see what the St. Louis River looks like, uh, which is where our water goes. So uh, take a look, enjoy, it's not real long. Like and subscribe if you uh, wanna keep following me and my journey and, and uh, what we're doing at the farm. Appreciate you being here. See you later. Okay, this is a map of our property. Uh, north is at the top, the two roads on the right and the left run north-south. Um, that yellow line is the uh, ditch that we enhanced last year. Uh, the far left side, there's a culvert that comes across the, dr the driveway there, um, meeting the water coming down the, the south side of the driveway. Uh, at that yellow line. So starting at that yellow line, we enhanced this ditch. We dug it down about two feet, two and a half feet, and all the way down uh, past the garage, and then made a slight jog across the field, and then turn and down into the woods. From the woods, it runs across that wooded area uh, to the far right or easterly side, uh, collects and then goes under a culvert to a creek that's on the other side. That creek goes to a river, that river goes to the St. Louis River, and uh, our water ultimately ends up in Lake Superior. Okay, this is the water running the first evening of, of the first warm day. You can really see that it's starting to run hard. Uh, we just come past the garage. This is the a field crossing that I drew on the map just to the right of the garage over on the right hand side. Uh, and then it comes out the other side, makes its way down through the field um, and into, into the woods where it progresses to the culvert that takes it across the way. We had a fair amount of uh, erosion happening here and I'll point those out as we get farther along here. So this is uphill, uh, up driveway towards the left past the yellow line. So this is between the road on the left and the yellow line. Um, and this is the natural ditch that runs uh, the water along the roadway comes into this natural ditch. But unfortunately this first land crossing that we put in in our ditch appears to be frozen on the first day. And so the water backs up and uh, goes over the top again causing a fair amount of erosion. Um, and so it just you know, it, water is going to go where water needs to go. It goes out in the field, it goes over the top. The goal of the ditch was to obviously keep the water in the ditch and not let it go out in the fields uh, anymore. And then this is looking from that land crossing towards the left. Uh, that uh, culvert coming out is the very beginning of the yellow line. Uh, that's the, where we started to dig. This wrap, uh, this underlayment that you see laying there, um, we didn't get it finished last year before the snows came, but that is um, just there for weed protection, and then we plan on rocking this to keep it down. The rock didn't get in, but it, now we got a lot of rework to do. This is the flood right at the land bridge, or I should say the field right at the land bridge. 
and uh, this is typical. We stand a fair amount of water here in the springtime. It comes, it traverses from the south um, across the, the field uh, and kind of congregates here and then normally it would just kind of meander its way uh, down the hill. But here you can see we're accomplishing what I wanted to do and that is I wanted those fields to drain into this ditch so that they would empty faster and not have to traverse all the way down. So we see a little bit of that happening here. Uh, this is now the woods way down on the right hand side, uh, actually past the yellow line on the right hand side. We're in the woods and you can just see the when the water makes it that far. Now it just meanders through the woods. Nobody's here. This is another picture of the land crossing. Um, and notice the erosion. Uh, the erosion's really, really bad. Uh, this land bridge ultimately, just after these were done, uh, collapsed. But you can also see the water draining off the overhead field on the, on the right hand sides over there. Um, and that's all um, okay. That's, but if it was, you know, if we had finished uh, lining and rocking this, um, it, things might have been a little bit different. Uh, but what we learned here is our drain pipes through here are not big enough. And so our project, uh, you know, we didn't want this, but our project this year will be to take those out and put bigger ones in um, and then uh, rock this uh, whole area on the um, inlet outlet of both uh, crossings uh, so that the water doesn't create this kind of damage. Now. This was a record year for snow. It is official. It was a record year, 100 and, I don't know, 70 some odd inches of snow, but Duluth has had an all-time record in the 180 years or something they said that they're tracking it. So, um, you know, we don't expect this for next year, but on the flip side, we now know that in heavy snow years, we didn't build this big enough. And so, um, we'll go from 12 inch pipe to 24 inch pipe, we'll put rock in um, and, and allow for this type of water to come off the top of the fields without creating massive amounts of erosion. Okay, this is a uh, more recent picture just came in. This is the uh, field crossing or the driveway crossing that you saw the water running over the top. The field crossing has collapsed. And um, you'll see here's my daughter. She walked across the field crossing and uh, the whole middle collapsed, sucking her boot into the mud. And so she's, uh, you know, pulling her foot out. Now, a reminder, my daughter lives on the property um, and is a nurse in Duluth. Um, so here's her boot. Finally got it out. She had to take both of them off uh, and then pull them out of the mud. Uh, so just some rework that has to be done. All right, here we just have some pictures of the swing bridge at J. Cook State Park Historical. More to give you a perspective, and I'll go through these in some detail here. Um, you know, how much space is under that bridge when we're not flooding? And uh, in a minute here, when we get through this series of pictures so that you can see what the bridge looks like, then we're going to cut over to some video. This came from Yahoo Photos. You can simply Google uh, J. Cook State Park uh, Swing Bridge, and that's uh, just where these pictures came from. Uh, I assumed they're in the public domain um, because I can get them from Yahoo, and so that's all that's, uh, that we're showing you here. And then in just two seconds, it's going to switch over, and this comes from a YouTube channel, uh, Camp and Tramp right here. Camp and Tramp uh, got permission from them. Uh, they live in the area and uh, posted these videos of the St. Louis River. You can see it's a cold and snowy. Uh, this was probably taken um, the first week of uh, April. But you can see the river is already um, really, really high. It's probably higher today. Uh, than when these were taken and look at how tumultuous uh, the water is there as it comes over those big boulders that you saw in the prior photos. Um, so this is 
this is uh, what we're dealing with here up near the Duluth area and uh, all the all the rivers that come down into Superior are full and some are coming out of the banks the St. Louis River back uh, near Scanlon um, is coming out of the banks near a restaurant uh, and a campground up there um, so uh, quite a bit of flooding uh, locally here but I'm gonna just leave you here for a few minutes um, and then this will come to an end with the power of the St. Louis River uh, again I'm Steve Erickson the first time farmer if you like the work that I'm doing here and you enjoy getting kind of a little taste of what's happening in the um, upper north of Minnesota uh, subscribe hit the like button um, all of those are appreciated leave a comment uh, that's appreciated too if you like this and uh, we hope to see you on the next one thanks <laughs>